Hello everyone, I'm Daniel Ravi, a Senior Research Associate at uh, UCL, and today I'm going to present our recent work on generating images that mimic disease progression. Simulation of medical images is a growing area of re research relevant to many healthcare applications. Recent work in computer vision and artificial intelligence have proposed novel deep neural networks that can be trained directly on longitudinal data with the purpose to progress and regress images. A popular example that belongs to this type of application is the prediction of face aging for a specific individual. Starting from this technology developed for natural images, our question is whether we can translate them to medical imaging by introducing novel bio biological constraints aimed to model aging and disease progression directly in structured MRI. In our specific case, we are interested in learning and simulate images that describe neurodegeneration in the brain. Such a system can be particularly useful to predict patient outcome and therefore improve patient treatments. Differently from other standard models that only predict a disease label associated with the patient, the network that we are proposing in this work generates an entire MRI sequence and simulates the course of the disease for a specific subject starting from a specific time point. This has the advantage to provide a transparent result to the clinician that will be able to verify the reason for the obtained prediction. Most importantly, such a system can be useful to help the selection of a subject involved, involved in clinical trials or to validate hypothetical models that describe no well un understood disease like Alzheimer's. Unfortunately, most state of the art medical imaging simulator developed so far have limitations that preclude them from producing high resolution and accurate subject specific images. Existing solutions suffer three key limitations. First, they, they, may, they may lack individualization. Second, they may be computationally expensive or produce insufficient resolution. And last, they may be limited to, to the images. In summary, the main challenges in this type of simulation are 1. The ability to obtain a subject-specific prediction 2. Generate high-resolution images and 3. Deal with high-dimensional high data In this work, we present a new framework to overcome all these limitations. The framework is called 4D Degenerative Adversarial Neural Image Net, 4D Danine and is developed to generate high-resolution longitudinal MRI that mimics subject-specific neurodegeneration in aging and disease. The core of our network processes a single slice and its architecture is depicted in this figure. The first block in green is used to remove irrelevant variation in the data. This includes intensity normalization, scalar removal, and linear co-registration to an MNI template. The second block in orange is a conditional deep out encoder. The aim of this block is to learn a mapping between the original manifold and the lower dimensional space referred to as the latent space. This latent space is conditioned on metadata associated with the subject for example, diagnosis or age. And this would allow us to model the heterogeneity of the disease. The yellow blocks are the adversarial network of our system. The adversarial networks are a class of artificial intelligence algorithms which train two separate models, a generator and a discriminator, that challenge each other in a sum zero game. In our system, we make use of two discriminator networks, DZ and DB. They are trained adversarially with the conditional deep out encoder. DZ 
take an input, the vector in the latter space, and thus the aim to smooth the temporal progression. DB instead take an input the synthetic images and thus the aim to verify that the system produces realistic brain structures. Finally, to capture the pattern of image intensity change that accompany disease progression, our system uses two separated losses representing the biological constraint and they are depicted in the gray blocks in the figure. The block in blue represents a novel training strategy called profile weight function, PWF, described in more detail later in this presentation, and as the purpose to stabilize the, the training of the system by controlling the weight of the different loss during training. In this slide, I'm going to present in more detail, details the proposed biological constraints associated with the neurodegeneration and consisting in voxel and regional based loss. Their purpose is to mimic neurodegeneration by ensuring monotonically decreasing intensity that is consistent with aging and or disease progression. Recall that intensity is normalized in the first block of our pipeline. The voxel-based loss penalizes non-monotonic non progression by imposing that all the voxel intensity always decrease. This voxel loss is a good regularizer for, for the progression, but introduce voxel-wise rigidity caused by a model intensity change that can occur due to the tissue deformation. We mitig mitigate this problem with a regional-based loss that models slice-wise re regional neurodegeneration through a set of pre-trained logistic regressors. Each regressor is trained to predict intensity progression in fixed overlapping region with age at baseline, age at follow-up, and diagnosis used as a as predictive uh, features. Due to the adversarial network and multiple sub laws, the train of each single slice model is often unstable. Training failure in a slice model will generate spatial inconsistency artifact in the synthetic 3D MRI. To overcome this instability, we propose PWF a strategy that imposes a training prior and ensures that each slice model converts to a stable and consistent solution. PWF is used to guide the system to focus on a few fewer loss at a time, limiting the traverse of the training manifold. This is achieved by dynamically weighting each component loss during every training epoch. The left side of the figure shows a typical network training where the weights of each loss are constant over training. In some cases, this may lead to a local minimum that creates visible artifacts on the generated images. The right side of the figure depicts how uh, PWF helps to avoid the local minimum, and this ensures that different models reach a consistent optimal solution with no artifacts. Finally, since each single slice model is trained separately on the different axial positions, anatomical detail can be, can be limited in the order to access view. To restore these missing detail, details, we further include a 3D image super resolution block at the end of, the, uh, our, at the end of our pipeline. In our experiment, we use 12,386 pre-processed T1 weighted MRI scan from 1,216 partic participants on, on the ADNI study. Participants were aged between 63 and 87 years old, and 28 were cognitively normal, four have been diagnosed with subject memory concern, 54 with mild cognitive impairment, and 14 with Alzheimer's disease. We divide our data set in uh, training set 80%, test set 10%, and validation set the last 
in the test set, we make sure that participants have at least one follow-up visit two years after the baseline to allow sufficient time for ob observable neurodegeneration to occur. In our experiment, the input is the baseline scan, and the ground truth is the follow-up MRI against which we compare our results. The training procedure for our system requires two days on 100 GPUs. The video in these slides, in these slides show an example of the entire simulation obtained using 4D DaniNet. Neurodegeneration is apparent in the progression, and the main manifestations are ventricular expansion, hippocampus contraction, and cortical tiny. From this video, we can see three facts. The first is that our system does not produce visible artifacts. The second is that the images have high resolution. And the third, by looking at the details in the bottom, we can see that the progression is subject specific. To verify these facts, we have performed a visual assessment based on evaluating image realism complemented with quantitative analysis based on measuring the ability to predict accurate volumetric biomarkers. More specifically, in our experiment, we have considered six brain regions that are the left hippocampus, the right hippocampus, the per peripheral gray matter, the ventricular CSF, the total gray matter, and the total white matter. In the quantitative analysis, we compare the result obtained by our solution against traditional regional expansion regressors. In this slide, we report two cases of our quantitative ablation study, where the synthetic images obtained by the different configuration of 4D DaniNet were compared. The, in the individual component of 4D DaniNet, considering in this experimental. In the first column, the basic model obtained by simply training each, each slide's model independently, then stack the result together. In the second column, the model denoted by PWF, where the profile weight function is used. And in the third column, the model denoted by SR, where the 3D super resolution block is enabled. The full configuration reported in the four, in the four column produces visually superi superior MRI, having fewer artifacts than all the other configurations. In the baseline configuration, individual axial slides are trained independently, which lead to notable artifacts appearing in sagittal and coronal axes. I highlighted uh, with uh, the yellow boxes in the figure. The use of uh, PWF reduces this issue. When PWF is used without the super resolution block, anatomical details are often not visible, highlighted with the red box in, in the figure. Conversely, when the super resolution block is, is used without the PWF, images can show anatomical details but may contain a realistic artifact and it is highlighted with the green box in the figures. Regarding the quantitative analysis, we quantify the accuracy of our system by analyzing volumetric error as a, per as a percentage of total brain volume for the six region of in interest uh, mentioned before. We calculate volumes using the FSL library. In our experiment, we compare the result obtained by our approach against the baseline and other traditional methods used to predict biomarkers trajectories. These traditional approaches are regression-based model trained directly on the extracted brain volume of the training set, with gender and diagnosis as a covariate. More specifically, we consider a naive support vector regressor, a linear mixed F model and two optimized regression models defined as SBR star and LMIE star, where 20% of outliers were removed. 
the worst performing method is the uh, baseline approach. The best performing method is to depend on brain region size. For small region, SBS star and LME star slightly outperform our solution. For large regions, our approach has the highest accuracy by a considerable margin. A possible interpretation of this result is that the behavior of this disease mechanism on small regions follows linear models, and therefore regressor-based approach can provide already good results. Instead, disease mechanism on large regions are most likely highly non-linear, and therefore a complex deep neural network similar to for the Daninet would achieve much better performances. We have further analysis, uh, analyzing our system by running a survey. I would be grateful if you could help us by taking part in it. The purpose of this survey is for clinical experts to assess the quality of the generated MRI. The survey would take up approximately 30 minutes to be completed and can be stopped at any given time. To access uh, uh, the, survey, the survey, please follow the link on the top of the slide. The link will open a web page which, show on top of, which shows on top of the page the input images uh, representing the, uh, a structural MRI from uh, an, admin, an admin subject. Below, two more images labeled as A and B. One of them is the real follow-up. The other is the synthetic image estimated from the input for the same follow-up follow -up interval. The users have to guess the simulated images and evaluate them in terms of a visual artifact. The survey will also ask to estimate which clinical diagnosis the image A and B yield to make sure they, there are no clinical inconsistency. We hope that the results from this survey confirm that the framework produces realistic high-resolution 3D MRI that are indistinguishable from the real follow-up. In conclusion, in this work, we have proposed an extensively, um, we have proposed and extensively evaluated a novel framework called 4D Daninet for simulating neurodegeneration and aging our contribution can be summarized as follows. We design a new deep neural network that enables the simulation of 4 DMRI in both aging and disease. We propose PWF to improve training stability and reduce image artifact. And we propose a new validation protocol based on, vol on volumetric comparison to assess the accuracy of such a system. In our experiments, we demonstrated that 4D Daninet generate accurate and realistic images, and our results outperform other methods for modeling neurodegeneration in aging and Alzheimer's disease. This gives uh, this give us confidence that our proposed solution can be useful in clinical application to better understand neurodegeneration. Uh, neurodegeneration. Finally. Although the 4D Dalinet has been designed to model neurodegeneration in MRI, due to its high modularity, it can be extended to work with different medical imaging modality, example PET and CT, and to model degeneration disease in other organs, for example, lung, prostate, retina, etc. Further, although we consider model condition upon only age and clinical diagnosis, the framework is sufficiently general to handle any conditional uh, feature. Example, this is phenotype or genotype, demographics, lifestyle measures, and clinical score, etc. And with this, I would like to conclude uh, my uh, presentation. And um, I would like to thank all uh, the sponsors that have supported uh, my research, and I'm open uh, to your uh, questions.